COEX Clover 4 Coat is a new generation of education drones. The company claims that the drone is suitable for beginners. And I'm now going to check it out, whether this is actually true, because this is my first drone that I will build completely from scratch. But in order for you to not get bored during my clumsy building a drone, I will talk to wonderful Elena Saliverstova, Copter Express worker. Elena is a teacher and tutor of drone courses and competitions. Let's see what's inside this wonderful box. An assembly kit, batteries, battery charging, a set of tools, radio equipment that is necessary for manual operation. That's the whole set of the copter. You can buy such a set on AliExpress. Moreover, until August 31st, a discount of pools is valid for the first 10 clients among our subscribers using the promo code PROROBOTS, which can be combined with all other discounts and promotions on the site. So, we will start with building the frame. Elena, tell us, how did you come to drone construction? My first education is pedagogical. I was a first-year student of master's degree when I was told about Quantorium and they were waiting for me. So after that, I began to keen on aircraft construction, drone construction, and studying the copter. Next, we will attach the stiffness plates. The frame located below goes through the hole. Here we attach two screws. There are resistant ones and screws to fix the plate from above. Elena, please tell us, how should a beginner dive into the drone industry? First, you can try to build some kind of constructor yourself. For example, Clover? as an option, then you can learn how to control it, launch it into autonomous flight, then, when you have already learned some basic principles, you can create your own drone or create some kind of project, an engineering or programming algorithm. After you have constructed your first drone, you need to participate in competitions. You can either make your own project after building your own drone and deepen your knowledge in certain areas, or use your knowledge in competitions. At what age can a beginner start? There are World Skills Russia competitions, academic competitions, NTI, Innopolis Open. We also have a Copter Hack project competition. We have constructed the frame. Now we are starting to install the motor. And here it is important to say that the smallest screws are used when installing the motor. It's great you've mentioned that because I would definitely start with big screws. Let's just say it's interesting that the motors spin in different directions. Why is that? The motors are set diagonally. Some of them spin in the right direction, others spin to the left one clockwise. This is necessary to balance the flight. Thus, in order to fly to the right, you need to speed up the motors on the left side and to fly forward speed up the back ones. So the movement is regulated by the speed of the motors. That's right. We put it so that the winding goes inside the frame and fasten it. Elena said there is no other way to attach them if you are wrong. Yes, in this case the hole will not match the frame. It's attached with the smallest screws, as Elena said. Now we are installing brushless motors. What can we learn here? Here we have some mystical numbers, 2306, which means diameter and height of the motor. And what power do they have? It says 2300 kV. This is the number of RPM per volt. We built the frame and installed the motors. What's next? Next, we install a power distribution board, so we need to prepare the place for that. Elena. Tell us how the drone is positioned and what is important for the competition. Well, if we're talking about positioning on the street, then the first thing that comes to our mind is GPS. If the drone flies outside, it is clear. If we are indoors, the GPS will be out of order. There's no reception. Sure. So what then? There are special navigation systems that are designed for indoor flight. The simplest one is RUCO markers. It means that the floor is glued with markers and the drone recognizes them and flies over them. Another one is optical flow, when a laser rangefinder is installed and computer vision is also applied. In both options, a camera is used. In the first one, it determines the mark along the camera and flies along them. There are also various positioning systems. Motion capture is used when multiple cameras are installed and navigation is carried out by cameras. There is SLAM. This is when the drone builds a trajectory for itself to fly. So we've put the screws for fixing the power distribution board, and we should put it in. Am I right? Sure. There is one more thing. There is an arrow on the frame, which indicates the direction of the copter. If it is going forward like this, accordingly, we set the power back. Okay, thanks. It doesn't go in freely. 
That's okay. Just press down a little. Skilled hands. We need to attach an RPM governor. Elena, what are they for? They control the rotation and direction of the motor. In general, I can say that everything is well done, i.e. the DIY device is made with the mind. Let's talk about programming. What languages is Copter Express programmed in and what do we need to know in general? Copter Express drones are mostly programmed in Python. As I see it, Python is used quite widely and can also be used in real life. So, we've attached all the details that are necessary at the moment. Let's fasten them with zip ties. Okay, so the drone is programmed using Python for ROS. What opportunities does ROS provide and why was it chosen? Generally, this is the popular framework for robotic systems and for Clover as well. There is already the social image and all the necessary settings. All you need is to download this image from the website using the documentation site. Then you should insert Raspberry Pi and make a few settings. Here we go, you're almost ready to fly. We cut off extra elements. It's convenient to use wire cutters. Well, we've installed the power distribution board and RPM governor. The next step is to install the flight controller. What exactly is the flight controller responsible for? Is it programmed separately? What is Raspberry responsible for? This is a bundle because the power of flight controller is not enough and therefore command messages are transmitted to the flight controller. It is written to install the 6mm damper struts and to attach the controller to them. Can I use these ones? Yes, you can. You have to pay very close attention to the nuts because there are a lot of fasteners. You have to understand which one to fasten. We've built a frame with motors and a controller, and now it's time to connect the RPM governor. This is how we do it. We're connecting the first right motor from the front. The black wire should be down there, as it says here. There is a white signal at the top. Then we're connecting the motor in front of it, and the next connector in the same way, and vice versa. Here we've got such a connection. The next step is to put the longest round aluminum struts under the Raspberry Pi controller. So, we insert it into the nearest hole. What have we already collected? The frame is almost ready. Also, we installed the motors, connected the RPM governor, installed the power distribution board, and the flight controller. And now we're preparing to install the Raspberry Pi. We had to disassemble our construction a little in order to shove the screws, because they ended up under the connectors. So it's better to do it before installing the controllers and distributor. Now we've attached the struts and screws to the deck that affixed to the back for the Raspberry Pi. That's it. The struts are bolted to the deck and it looks like this. Next we attach the deck to the frame so that the inscription coax is on the back. Here we go. We fasten it with these nuts. We install the Raspberry Pi. Our next step is putting a rangefinder. We do this in this way. We're taking the 20 struts 20 millimeter, the smallest ones, and attaching them to these four holes. And now we're installing the camera. Elena, take it out. Wow, such an honor for me. We have a camera for Raspberry Pi. So it goes with the lid. There is a computer vision here, camera, Raspberry Pi, and a flight controller. It's all serious. We fasten it to the deck using quite small screws. So, we're putting up the camera now. The camera is placed down and fixed with large screws. Done. We put the deck on top and take the wires to this side. We'll connect the Raspberry Pi here and the camera as well. May we put the camera on it at once? Why not? Here is a loop. It's a very delicate cable. He's a difficult one. You have to be careful here. Done. 
Now we open the lid, put the cable in, and press it back down. How about connecting to a Raspberry at once? Yes, let's do it. It's the same thing here. We're screwing it to the struts. So, next we're connecting the laser rangefinder to the second row from the edge. The red plus power should be the most recent. Here we go. So I'm connecting the power distribution board to the first stub, the plus side of the red one to pin 2, the black one to pin 3. On 3, as we say, in series from the loop, in fact, the pins are... Agreed. We're connecting the radio receiver to the flight controller. Where's the radio receiver? Here. Well, a flight controller is on the other side. There is a unit here called RCIN. Here, it's signed. We're taking the wire and connecting it to the radio receiver on one side. All done. The antenna is attached to the radio receiver. Next, we're connecting the flight controller to the Raspberry Pi using a USB cable. Pulling it to the Raspberry Pi and connecting it to any USB. Well, we've forgotten to connect the power to the flight controller, so we're fixing it now. Using this wiring from the power distribution board connector, power where it says to the flight controller. We've done it as recommended. We finally moved on to the strapping. We should stick an LED strip on. Using double-sided tape as I get. Tape is a great invention. Do you know when it was invented? Hmm, I wonder when. It turns out to be space technology. When the Americans were making the lunar rover, they were given metal scotch tape with it. It was the first tape, and that's come in very handy. And the duct tape appeared later? The blue one? Maybe. So we've done this part. Next, we're installing the transparent feet, and now we're assembling. We've got four feet. We're attaching them to our copter using the right screws. Here we've got the copter on its own feet. Elena said not to crank up the near beam because we'll be putting an LED strip in here and we are putting it up before. Connecting the LED strip to the power supply. We've installed to this connector, and now we're connecting the LED strip to this pin. Just a little bit left. As I get it, it's a protective housing. Putting on the top deck. Now that the copter is built, we need to set it up. Let's follow the recommendations. The most important thing is to remove the propeller so that you don't get hurt if something goes wrong. Yes, we will have very dangerous moments. Yes, even so, the intrigue is on. So we're installing the Q ground control to flash our flight controller, taking two cards, one larger and one smaller. We need one for writing the image to the Raspberry Pi and another one for the flight controller. A bigger card for the Raspberry Pi, taking a smaller stick and formatting it, preferably FAT32, so that the controller sees our stick. It's very convenient. If you do not have a computer input for an SD card, a card reader is provided in the kit. Formatting as standard, and then insert the flight controller. Sure. The flight controller has a special connector. That's great. Next, flashing the flight controller, take the USB that was inserted into the Raspberry Pi. That's right. Now we're connecting it to the computer. By the way, it's quite convenient that the USB unfolds like this, so we can connect it to the computer. Oh, and a second USB cable is also included in the kit. We installed Q Ground Control and opened it in the menu. In order to load the firmware, we should disconnect the USB power supply and reconnect it. A menu will appear. Using it, we can download the firmware. It is in the instructions on the link. Next step is setting up the flight controller and radio remote. It says here that the channel is not detected. We need to switch the mode in the radio receiver. The instruction says that if no channel is detected when setting up, the mode must be switched. To do this, press the button on the receiver. At the bottom of the instructions, it says to press the bind button on the receiver. It is on the other side, clamping. Let's check it out. It should switch over. Yes, something was blinking. Checking that the program has appeared. All right, we can move on to setting up the remote control. Going to the Q ground control program. You can check it out now. Turning on the motors. 
To do this, move the bottom stick down and to the right. The motors are on. You can run it in manual mode. All systems are running well. Congrats, the flight controller setup is complete. Great, can we fly now? In manual mode, only the propellers and battery need to be connected. There are right-handed and left-handed propellers, so they must be installed according to the direction of rotation of the motors. Before flying, make sure that all the wires are hidden and there is nothing in the way of the propeller. Well, the copter is assembled and set up. Now let's see if it flies or not. What do you think? I believe it. Great. First we switch on the remote control, then we connect the battery, then we switch on the copter itself. There's a signal. Now it's important to understand that you should not confuse the front of the copter. The tail of the copter is the back side. As they say, the safe place is behind the pilot's back. Now it is important to smoothly lower. You were hiding something from us. You can fly. Well done. We did well. Hooray! Now we move on to programming. Sure. Sophisticated. Programming for autonomous flight. What can I say about this kit? Firstly, everything is included in the complete package. From all the necessary parts for the drone, starting with the necessary tools, batteries, and even flashcards. You don't need to buy anything. Sure, with this educational kit, you can understand thoroughly what a drone is made of, fully assemble it, understand in terms of construction and configuration how it can be programmed to perform autonomous operations. In general, once you have mastered this kit, you can move on to your own real quadcopter projects and even some industrial tasks. I would like to focus your attention on some important points. Firstly, thanks to optical positioning sensors and laser rangefinders, this drone can fly and hover without AR UCO markers. Secondly, the redesigned Clover has carbon fiber frame, which is much stronger than the predecessors. This drone is bigger and heavier than the DJI Tello. Its software and hardware are completely open source, with everything you need to build a competition drone and learning how to program it as well as pilot it. A side benefit is that you can refurbish it yourself from spare parts that are freely available or can be 3D printed. Like this video, share it, 